Many of you have asked me underneath the video about the pop-ups, ping, how to pass data to the pop-ups and get data back from the pop-ups. So that is exactly what you're going to see in this video. Let's go. Let me show you first what it looks like whenever we've seen all of this video and um, what we're actually about to see. So here's a simple button and whenever I push this button, you don't see it, but in the code, it will pass in data from a complex object um, and it will show that in the pop-up. So here you can see that initial data that's coming from an object that we're putting in here. And whenever we close the pop-up, we um, transform this data and we give that back to the calling page, in this case, the main page, um, and it will show us that data in a dialogue. But you know, you can process this data any way you like, but this is just to show you how to get the data into that pop-up and um, some data outside of that pop-up, which is really cool. So let me know what you think. Um, let's just see how to implement this. But before we do, very important announcement, I have not one, but two new members on my channel. So big, big thank you for Alex Gell and Larry Feldman. You are the two newest senior tier developer um, uh, members on my channel. Thank you so much for that. And of course, all my other members as well, junior or senior, um, I love you all alike. Thank you so much for sticking with me in this journey and supporting me a little bit. If you are considering to become a member too, find that little join button on my channel or below this video and see what it's all about. I have another video there. I think I'm wearing the same sweater even. So, you know, um, I'm just recording this all in, in the same outfit all the time. Um, and go check out what it can do for you and maybe you'll support me. Now, let's quickly go check out all that pop-up goodness. It won't come as a shock that we are in Visual Studio 2019 on Mac, so Visual Studio for Mac. Um, you can see here a File New Xamarin Forms application. On the left, you can see the XAML of the default template that comes out of the box. On the right, you can see it running on um, the iPhone simulator, the iOS simulator. And with Hot Reload, we can now just you know go in here and say pop up uh, data uh, passing demo sample sample. Sample, there we go. Uh, naming is hard, people, naming is hard. And whenever you save that, it will automatically update on iOS. Works also on Android, and if you're using Visual Studio for Windows, all the same. Um, so what we are going to do today is, actually let me implement a pop-up real quick. I've mentioned already that I already have a video about that. Um, so go check out if you want to know all the details about that, um, I highly recommend it. So I'm not going to go over all the details in this video because this is about something else, but if you want to know how to set up that initial pop-up, then go check that out. Uh, so I'm gonna to go to my Solution Explorer. By the way, I've already installed the Xamarin Community Toolkit, of course, that is uh, where this this pop-up lives. So, you know, install that NuGet, you know how to do it. Um, and here I'm gonna go to my shared project, right click and say add new file. And in here I'm going to choose a forms content page example and I'm going to name this um, my pop-up, there we go, add new. And we don't want this to be a content page, we want this to be a pop-up, there we go. And IntelliSense is going to help us with adding the using Xamarin Community Toolkit UI views. There we go, so we got that one. And now we need to make that um, inheritance also in the XAML, of course. So here you want to add the XML namespace is XCT. And then we have that fancy URL one, which is really, really cool. XCT pop up. Uh, there we go. And now the content, whoops, there's something weird going on here with the completion pop up there we go now we created a pop up right so this is something that we can use um, as a pop up now in our main page um, i'm going to add a little button that's going to show the pop up so button text is um, show me the pop up and i'm going to add a clicked handler to actually you know trigger some some code to actually do that. Um, so it should have generated this in the code behind. You can see I saved it and it already shows me the button. It doesn't do anything, of course. Um, so in our main page, example.cs, I have it open right here. There's our button clicked handler. Um, and now we need to also add using xamarin.communitytoolkit.extensions. 
because the way we go to our pop-up, we navigate to it. It is an extension method on the navigation service that is in Xamarin Forms. So now we can say navigation, there it is, um, dot show pop-up. See, and we have two. So show pop-up and show pop-up async. I will get back to that in a little bit. Let's do, um, um, well, actually, I'm going to go do show pop-up async right now. And you can just use it like this. And we can say new, uh, my pop-up, excuse me, my pop-up, there we go. And this is async, so we should um, await that. And when we do, we should make this async. So there we go. We should now be able to show this pop-up. It's telling me squiggles, so what's going on? Um, cannot be inferred from usage. Okay, okay, that is all fine. Because this show pop-up async returns a task with um, you know, a certain object that is coming back, a T. So this is a generic. Um, so we can catch a result now. So we can do this. And whenever we do this, we can use this result. So right now, um, it says it can't be inferred. I'm inclined to try and restart this, see if it actually does anything, because it should just, you know, whenever you don't say anything here, it should just return an object. See, so rebuilding it fixed uh, this thing, and um, actually it should show a pop-up right now, but it doesn't do much. So it shows it and we're getting a result, although we're not using it right now. So now here, let's let's say that we're just getting back a simple string, right? So um, this result is, if we inspect this, it's going to be an object. It doesn't know what is being returned. Um, so we can just do um, here a wait uh, display alert. There we go. Um, result, and here we can say with this string interpolation, um, result is result. And whenever we do this kind of string thing, it will automatically call the to string on this result. So whenever we return a string, we'll just see that string showing up. And there we go. So now whenever we um, um, go back from the pop-up, we should um, you know, get whatever result we have and we are showing that in this display alert. So now let's make sure that in our pop-up we're actually returning that string. Um, so in my pop-up, I'm going to add this button and I'm going to give it a text, which is close pop-up. And I'm giving this a clicked handler so that we can actually do something. So there we go. Now the my pop-up XAML CS is still open. So let's go there. Again, the button clicked handler was generated automatically by Visual Studio. So thank you, Visual Studio. Um, and here, because we are now inheriting from pop-up, we got a couple of fancy new things. One of which is the dismiss method. Um, you can see it right here. So whenever we do that, um, you can see it will suggest us that we can um, supply a parameter here, which is an object of result. So, um, you know, this is again, just a generic um, um, object. So whenever I um, um, data from pop up, put this in here and do this. Now I need to rerun this because I made some changes in the code. So let me quickly stop and rerun the application. But what we should see now is we should show our pop up and I have a button to close it. And whenever I close it, we call this dismiss and it has this, this string value that it will return to um, the calling page, which is in this case, main page. So show me the pop-up, close pop-up. And whenever we do, you can see this dialogue is shown with data from pop-up. So this is a very simple way to um, you know get data back. Um, but of course, this also, and this also works, I'm using a string right now, but this object can also be a complex object, it can be anything, right? So that is the cool thing about this. Now, of course, if you are a good developer like I am, and then you want to maybe strong type these things, right? So I want to know which object is coming back. And you might want to show some data in your pop-up that um, comes from somewhere else. So you're going to pass in an object first to show actually data in that pop-up. So let's see that. So let me click this one. Um, I'm going to add a very simple object. So let me go to our shared project right here. Going to add a new class. And let's make this, um, what am I gonna make this? My, well, pop-up, let's make it pop-up result, um, which is not going to cover the scenario exactly that I have in mind, but anyway. Um, so, and let's make a public string um, return data, there we go, which is just a property, get set. 
Um, so that is a very simple re uh, object, right? But this can be anything. Again, it can have all kinds of properties or methods or whatever, um, just to, to get the point across, right? So pop-up result, there we go. Now, um, let's go back to my pop-up XAML um, first, and I'm going to add a little label here too. So let's make this a stack layout. There we go, add the button in there and also add a label now and give that a name uh, which is my label just to you know stay in the same area of naming um, and that's it for now and the button can remain the same and in my pop-up i'm now going to get first um, the pop-up result so here's where it goes a little bit wrong the pop-up result um, because you know normally you would probably put something else in your pop up and not the result already but you know you'll you'll get the idea you can also you know this can be a different um object of course from the thing that you're returning so it, you, you can do anything here and let's just say um to make this complete we're going to say private pop up result um result here we go and we're going to say our result is result so now we're assigning this to a field that we have in this pop-up and i'm going to set my label it doesn't show up here for some reason dot text is um result well let's make it this one then result dot return data so now it's going to show um, in the label, uh, the value that we pass in from our pop-up result, right? So we'll see that in a little bit. And whenever we click the button, so whenever we are going to dismiss this, we are going to say, um, first, let's um, change that result a little bit. Return data is um, return data from pop-up. There we go. And then I'm going to say dismiss, um, well, this, this object basically, so result. Now, it still isn't strongly typed, right? This is just going to be the same thing, uh, but now I have to go to my main page and cast this not as a string, but I need to cast this as a pop-up result and it will work all the same, right? But the cool thing is, because you see, this is now still an object here. If we can get the tooltip to show up. Well, trust me, it's a it's an object. Um, but the cool thing that we can do now is go here to my pop-up XAML CS, and there's also a pop-up which takes like the, the object that we want to return. So if I say pop-up result here, it's going to know that we want to return a pop-up result. So if you also look then at the um, um, dismiss here, again, I think I need to build this. So let me quickly do that, build. Um, for this to maybe show up, it doesn't exist in the current context, why not? Oh, because I need to change like the, the XAML page too. So in this XAML page, we also need to change this, right? Which is a bit tricky because in XAML, the um, uh, syntax is a bit weird for that. But let's go to the My Pop-Up XAML. So we have this, and this is not going to work, right? Because the angle brackets do something um, completely different. So we're going to have to say XML namespace local because we want to reference that pop-up result thing. And this is going to be um, XF, no XCT, uh, pop-ups with data sample. There we go. So it will fill this in for me nicely. Um, and then what you want to do is a, a weird little thing called X type arguments. And it's not even showing up in the IntelliSense. So I don't know why that is. And here we can say local, uh, whoops, local pop-up result. There we go. Oh, it doesn't even need the local. That's interesting. Local. Well, I would think this is needed. Uh, but anyway, so now this is this is the equivalent basically of, you know, um, doing doing this in the code behind pop up result, right with with the angle brackets. So this is this is well, this is getting weird now. Don't forget, forget I ever showed you this. Um, but this x type arguments tells you that this is the same kind of overload as this. Um, and whenever I sh build it now, it should at least know about the my pop up dismiss thing right here. It doesn't, yes, it does. So here you can see now in the dismiss, it sees that it has to return the, the pop-up result, right? So now this is strongly typed and that is cool. So if we now go back to our main page XAML CS and it asks us now for something in the constructor because that is what I said. So let's make first our um, result. Oh, I already have the result to so make this a pop-up result is new pop-up result, there we go. 
and I just can give this the return data is initial data, right? So this is the initial data that we are going to pass in. So this is our pop-up result. Let's do that right now. And this takes that. So that's going to take care of showing that label with initial data. Um, and now this result, if we can get the IntelliSense, you can see that this is also expecting the pop-up result now. So this is also strongly typed and it knows that a pop-up result is coming back. Um, so now when we have redo the display alert and we say result, result, but now this, this, this result is a pop-up result and we can go in there and say return data. Okay, so let's save that. Um, I accidentally, in all my enthusiasm, closed the page too, but that doesn't matter. Um, save that. And this is still the same, show me the pop-up. So let's quickly just stop the project, rerun it again, and we should see this all in action. And that is then, um, if, we, if we pull this off, you know how to pass data into that pop-up. You can also use it as your binding context then, of course, um, and how to return strongly typed data from that same pop-up. So um, fingers crossed, show me the pop-up. You can see that initial data is coming in, um, and then whenever we close it, it changed the result data and it is now return data from pop-up. Um, everything strongly timed. So that is how you pass in data into your pop-up and get it out of there as well. Um, let me know if there's any other questions, of course, on the pop-ups um, in the video comments down here below and I'll be sure to answer you or make another video. I hope this answers all of your questions that you might have about putting data into that pop-up, getting data out of that pop-up. Um, while recording this, I realized that I might have missed a little scenario with the light dismiss. So whenever you click outside of the pop-up, of course, a simple workaround is to just um, disable that for now to um, you know only let the user exit the pop-up through a button or whatever you come up with in your design. Um, but there is also a way to return data from that light dismiss. So is that something that you want to see? Do you have any other questions? Please let me know down below in the video comments. I will answer you, create a new video, or do all the things that you um, are used from me that I do. Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. Please click that like button under this video so other people know you like it and maybe they should check out too. Um, if you're watching this and are not subscribed yet, then please consider subscribing so that you can be notified of new content automatically. I will show up on your YouTube wall. How awesome would that be? And as always, of course, See you for the next video. Keep coding.